Welcome to our presentation about Spirant's V2X virtual testing solution, followed by a quick demonstration of V2X virtual in action. In today's presentation, we will cover what is V2X and what are the goals it targets, radio technologies that are available, the Spirant V2X virtual test environment, use cases for V2X virtual, how to connect to V2X virtual, and finally, We'll demonstrate V2X Virtual in action. So what is V2X? V2X, which stands for Vehicle to Everything Technology, enables vehicles, traffic signs, pedestrians, and other parties involved in road traffic to exchange messages among each other about things like vehicle details, for example, how big are they, size and dimensions, their position, the direction they're heading, current traffic information, for example, map data representing the current traffic situation at a given location, signal phase and timing, signal ahead is green and will turn into red in seconds. Applications hosted by these parties can implement algorithms which use this information to improve road safety, to enhance driving comfort, fuel efficiency, or to yield other benefits. For example, if the system spots a potentially hazardous situation, it can activate advanced driving assistance systems to prevent a crash. V2X comes in two variants with regard to the radio technologies. The first, mostly referred to as Dedicated Short Range Communications, or DSRC, uses a technology similar to Wi-Fi, which allows the vehicles to communicate with each other in broadcast mode. The second, Cellular V2X, or CV2X, uses cellular, mobile network, radio technology, and infrastructure for transporting V2X communication. Spirant V2X Virtual Test Solution focuses specifically on the latter technology, Cellular V2X. Let's look at the hardware components of V2X Virtual, that is, the dedicated Spirant C50 appliance, the Spirant GNSS simulator for timing and positioning emulation, and the optional Spirant Vertex radio channel emulator for radio frequency impairment testing. Let's take a closer look at the powerful device Spirant dedicated for the V2X Virtual. It contains eight radio modules, two CAN ports, and four Ethernet ports. Spirant V2X Virtual is a solution for conformance testing, for functional validation and performance evaluation of devices and systems implementing V2X applications. This integrated and scalable environment combines several components for testing V2X applications at any stage of the product development cycle, from early prototyping to pre-production. The solution supports the execution of traffic scenarios on the test bench in a virtual environment that reflects all communication properties of field testing. This helps to optimize costly and risky field tests by making them more efficient and targeted. How does V2X Virtual accomplish all of this? By providing a simulated environment for the devices under test, DUTs, it does this by using dedicated traffic or vehicle simulators, such as SUMO, and uses GNSS simulators to provide position data for the DUT. It also observes the DUT behavior in regard to HMI notification based on the detected situation and the transmission of V2X messages, and also by giving the possibility to scale the functionalities. Let's examine a few use cases. We'll start with automotive. V2X Virtual provides solutions for automotive to verify cellular V2X support readiness for vehicle systems or subsystems and components. It emulates standard first-day V2X app validation of onboard units, OBU, hosted on vehicles or roadside units, RSU, installed on traffic signs in Software in the Loop, SIL, and Hardware in the Loop, HIL, setup. Besides these predefined applications, V2X Virtual also enables users to define custom vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle or vehicle-to-infrastructure scenarios that they can run to validate their automotive products. Let's discuss another use case how network equipment manufacturers, NEMs, use V2X Virtual. Here, V2X enables NEMs to test V2X devices like roadside units, RSUs, either individually or as part of an infrastructure, including a backhaul network and services to host applications. Besides NEMs, the V2X Virtual solution can also be used by mobile network operators, MNOs, and service providers for validating the network readiness to support V2X applications served by the UU interface. V2X Virtual accomplishes this through functional and performance tests, allowing to assess scalability and measuring key performance metrics, like to validate service level agreements. 
SLAs. One of the superpowers of V2X Virtual is the support of different cellular V2X protocol stacks from different regions. V2X Virtual supports stacks from China, Europe, and the US. V2X Virtual is designed to support other traffic simulators like Sumo, IPG CarMaker, VTD, etc. The Sumo traffic simulator is supported per default, and it lets users define customized traffic simulation scenarios like forward collision warning, emergency brake warning, and normal vehicle warning. To access the V2X virtual application, you will need nothing more than a web browser. You provide the IP address and the port on which the V2X virtual is running. This takes you to a landing page where you can easily run tests, generate tests, and download logs. Let's try it. We begin by logging in. Here we see the V2X virtual dashboard. If any tests are currently running, we would see those listed in the In Progress Test panel. Below that, we see our testing scenarios. And finally, we see a list of the last 10 tests that were run. Next, let's take a look at the Projects tab. You can see all the tests that we have previously loaded and configured. Think of this as a place to pre-configure tests so you can quickly select and run a test without having to reconfigure it every time. And finally, let's look at the Reports tab. This shows all the reports from previously run tests. So let's get ready to configure and run a test. We'll start by making sure all of our system parameters are set correctly. We click on the Settings button here on the upper right of the dashboard and bring up the System Configuration page. Spend a few minutes to set up these parameters to match your needs. You can see things like the IP address of the GNSS simulator, the starting position for the simulator, and so on. We also take a peek at the system status to make sure everything is working correctly. Here we see the GNSS simulator is running, and the radio modules have signal, so we're good to go. We can also see a variety of testing scenarios like forward collision warning, abnormal vehicle warning, and emergency brake warning. For each scenario, there's a set of specific test cases. If we hover our mouse over a specific scenario, we see a full description of the scenario to which those tests belong. We'll drill down into the emergency brake warning test scenario. We can see that this scenario is comprised of two tests, one for a far vehicle, one for a near vehicle. You can see a detailed explanation of what this test does. Today, I will run an emergency brake warning near vehicle test. This test expects that the vehicle under test, the DUT, issues a warning when an emergency braking occurs in the vehicle immediately in the same lane in front of the host vehicle or in an adjacent lane. I'll click to run the test. After a few seconds loading, the DUT actually acquires its geolocation through the GNSS signal from the simulator. Note that you can adjust some specific parameters to further customize this test. When we start the test, the system will update things like speed, location, and so on for both the DUT and for the vehicle ahead here in the runtime data area. Also, statistics from the test will display up here in the statistics window once we are underway. Great, so let's begin the test. We can see the vehicles come alive and the data is starting to stream. We'll focus our attention on the DUT. I click on this icon and the map will keep the DUT in the center of the map. You can see the vehicles ahead as well. You can watch the results as the test progresses. Here we see how many messages the DUT received, when they were received, the relative position of the vehicles, and so on. We see that the test passed. This is because the DUT received the messages we were expecting and processed them correctly. Let's dive in deeper by looking at the test log. In the All Tests panel, we see the tests we just ran. Of course, I could also go to Reports to find this log, but for now, I'll select on the latest test in the All Tests panel. Note we see the name of the test, the result, who ran the test, when they ran it, and how long the test took. We'll bring up the action submenu where we can do things like run the test again, show the report from the test, or download the logs. I'll select show report, which provides a formal and very complete report on the test. You can see the name of the test, the verdict, all the details like the parameters, and so on. If we return to the main screen, I want to point out one very useful feature. I can click here and replay the test. This doesn't run it again. It simply replays the test that was run in real time, allowing you to see precisely what happened. It subdivides the test into steps, where each step represents 100 milliseconds. You can watch at normal, faster, or slower speed. Or you can go step by step. Now, if you do want to run the test again, just click here and select Start the same simulation. Let's go to the Report tab. Here are all the reports from tests that we've run. You can select a single report, or as many as you like. I'll select just the last three tests and request to download the reports and the logs. 
We can use them for later evaluation and analysis offline, as well as to keep track of the progress of the DUT's features. And that's it for our quick run through of Spirant's V2X virtual testing solution. Thanks for watching. If you would like to learn more, please contact us at support at spirant.com or visit spirant.com/automotive. Thank you.